Assyrian tablets contain the earliest written record of Aurora's sky glow. Now, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we are proponents of the electric universe theory, the electric universe model, that everything's electric, and that our investigations have taken us into ancient America, studying the glyphs associated with that. And as we delve into these investigations, modern science is proving what we are finding. And we're able to actually date what's going on in the recent past, the history that's been hidden from you will be revealed if you just follow along. Ancient Assyrian stone tablets represent the oldest known reports of auroras dating to more than 2,500 years ago. The descriptions, written in cuneiform, were found on three stone tablets dating from 655 BC to 679 BC, and they predate other known historical references to auroras by about a century, according to the new study. Now we're going to be sharing you that study. But let's talk about Velikovsky and the unsung genius. Did you know that he predicted that Venus flew by the Earth exactly at this time? We will get to that. But let's get back to the article. Auroras are dazzling light shows that take place when waves of charged particles from the sun collide with Earth's magnetic field. Earth was likely visited by an immense solar storm around the 7th century BC, and this has recently been proven by ice core data. The auroras described in the tablets may have been the result of that powerful solar activity. The study authors wrote online on October 7th. The only problem is that the description they use is a glowing red sky. Yes, the same thing Velikovsky describes and the ancients. Now, earlier this year, another team of researchers found that a massive solar storm about 10 times stronger than any in modern history swept over Earth around 2,600 years ago as well. Fingerprints of this intense geomagnetic bombardment were left behind as radioactive atoms were trapped in Greenland's ice. And the authors of the new study wondered if Assyrian astrology from this period might have recorded it. And it certainly did. And, and here are the tablets. And, and the, what they record. Now the researchers investigated 389 reports on the cuneiform tablets in the collection at the British Museum. Most of the reports describe planetary and lunar activity. But three records noted phenomenon that were likely candidates for auroras. But I'm calling BS on this, and they are likely candidates for the Venus flyby. Red glow, red cloud, and red sky were the translations, according to the study. Now, that is not what auroras look like. My bad. Auroras are typically not red. Hello, Steve. What is red is Venus is... What, are, what is red is a comet coming in close proximity to the planet that ancients have described. Even in the Bible. My goodness. Now, Velikovsky in his book Worlds in Collision describes this all the way back in 1950. And he proposes that in the 15th century BC, Venus was ejected from Jupiter as a comet or comet-like object and subsequently passed near Earth through an actual collision with Earth is never mentioned because it never happened. It got closer and closer until finally, in the 7th century, Mars itself, displaced by Venus, made a close approach to Earth. Could this be the Mars approach, perhaps? We're just delving into it. Now here's the paper, the earliest candidates of auroral observations in Assyrian astrolog astrological reports. Now, Based on what we just read there, it should be anyone's supposition that it was the Mars flyby. 
as it was perturbed by Venus in the 7th century BC, because Mars is red, and, and the reports were all red, so you can have solar activity happening, or cosmic thunderbolts at the same time, when planets are in close proximity, you are going to get discharge. Now, read the paper yourself. We don't have time. This is going to be a short video. But we want to bring all the pieces together. The petroglyphs in the... Uh, which are prominent all over the world. There are millions of examples of petroglyphs that we can see that are probably a thousand years old or so, maybe 1500, because it's uh, what we're finding out is that there were massive civilizations throughout North America during this time, and they witnessed this. And what they saw were, were plasma discharge events in the skies, and these petroglyphs are describing these events. Now, there were several of the events, and this is the parad instability, the thunderbolts, the, the stick and stone man, whatever, squatter man, whatever you want to call it. According to archaeologists, they named this the mother of all animals because they just made it up. What else is new about science? But the ancients didn't make it up. This is the mother of all animals because it has six arms. But experiments in the lab prove that this can be recreated. And in Guyana, Armenia, Arizona, Tucson, the Alps, the U UAE, United Arab Emirates, Italy, Venezuela, all over the world, these same glyphs, these same visions by these same people. More plasma discharge, instability, experiment in the center, glyphs to the right. Now, Rex Bear and I have been reporting on these throughout the Southwest, and ice samples reveal that a massive sunstorm hit Earth in ancient times. And it could happen again, because these times are not so ancient. The big storm we're talking about, the Mars close approach, is 2,600 years ago, as predicted by Velikovsky and as proven by science now, and the Assyrian tablets. Ten times stronger than any solar storm recorded in the modern day. And if this storm happens again, goodbye, technology. The entire technological surface would be fried. It would make the Carrington event look like a burnt fingertip on a match. It would pale in comparison. It would destroy the grid forever, so to speak. We would instantly be knocked back into the Stone Age in an instant. And these findings suggest that such explosions recur regularly in Earth's history. So let me see, 2,600 years ago, and now we have an event uh, confirmed, the Charlemagne event, 775 AD. Another event at 900 AD, and the Carrington event. And we're in a loss. So the previous research detected two other ancient proton storms, similar manner. One happened at 993-94 AD, and the other, the Charlemagne event, 774-75. to The latter, the Charlemagne event, is the largest solar eruption known. And I think a lot of these feather glyphs could be associated with that outburst. Because we only have three in the last 3,000 years that we know about. And these glyphs are all probably that, that old. So they have to be depicting these events. No, no, no other. Now, Velikovsky's Venus, I believe, is the 27... 100 year old event, the one we're talking about here in the Assyrian tablets that describe red, red, and red, not aurora. Aurora is not red, it's blue and green and purple. Thank you, Steve. But the squatter man are, are petroglyphs that are purple, and these have been witnessed by ancient humans. And the Assyrian tablets are most assuredly the Mars flyby. These solar proton events are going to happen again, not. No, probably not Mars flybys, but similar Charlemagne events will happen. Are you prepared? Prepare with the ranch .com. Get prepared, not scared. We love each and every one of you. Thanks for watching the video. Share this with like-minded people. Comment below on what else you'd like to know or see on the channel. And be safe. It's coming.